Hey, how you doing? This is your boy Marcus J. Carey. Today we're going to talk about a topic I keep on hearing popping up. People keep on asking, should I learn how to code? Today we're going to talk about that. Keep the main thing, the main thing. So, should you learn how to code? I see, keep on seeing it popping up. I keep on hearing people talk about Bob coding this and that. And I'm here to tell you, you should still learn how to code today because I don't believe that you can really vibe code without knowing how to code. Uh, and I kind of compare it to something all the time. I tell people when you first started using Google, if you say you're researching something that you don't know, when you first research a topic, you're barely going to be able to uh, ask the right questions, right? So when it comes to, even though that there's, you know, a lot of different coding, vibe coding options out there, you still need to know how to talk to the LLM per se and, and how to build stuff. Also, um, I think that what, you, what you're gonna see with vibe coding is you're gonna see a lot of people code faster, but we're still gonna end up with a lot of the same product mistakes. One of the cool things about vibe coding that I see is I think that you can, if you know, if you know the right questions or the right prompts or context to give it, for instance, like if you know that there's an OWASP top 10 recommendations for a web app, you can you can actually tell the 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 vibe coding platform, whether it be maybe cloud code or something like that, or copilot, what you can do is you can say, hey, I want to have this uh, you know, conform with OWASP top 10. You can also do stuff like you can do unit testing with the code. So you still need to know how to do unit testing. You still need to know how to do uh, what OWASP top 10 is. So yes, you're going to code faster, but you, you just can't not know how to code and just vibe code anything you want to. Um, and also you, you definitely need to, you just need to understand what's going on uh, because you know, the, I think that vibe coding is going to get it maybe 80 to 90% there in some cases, but you still need to have that 10% knowledge to be able to create. So yeah, you're still going to have to learn how to code. And the cool thing about that, I mentioned that Google thing. I think this, whatever you're doing with AI, Bob, whatever, <laughs> you call it whatever you want to, you really need to learn the subject matter, whether it be, you know, product marketing, product development, people are using it everywhere, you know, related to building products, building companies. You still need to know how to run a company. The AI is not gonna be able to run a company for you and, and be able to make tough decisions. Some there's context that that you're never going to be able to get into this machine. There's there's emotions uh, related to that, um, and and it's just like vibe coding is awesome. I, I vibe code a lot now. I've created some pretty cool stuff, but it's because I know how to code, right? And so how I how I say if if you build an app, you have a lot a stack that you like. For instance, I like Next.js, so I like to build Next.js. I like Material UI, I like Prisma for my databases, I like Postgres. So when I'm vibe coding, I'm telling them to set up the stack that I'm super familiar with. But if you just go out the box and like vibe code something and don't know what you're doing, the LLM can pick whatever it wants to. And if it picks something you don't know, you can't troubleshoot it well. So learn how to code, then try to vibe code. Um, and yeah, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. I mean, and what's funny about this is, again, anything you can think of, you need to know it before you try to get uh, AI to go off and do it. Whether it, anything, right? Spreadsheets and all this other stuff, because you need to know that that twenty percent on the top. That's where you're gonna you're gonna make the difference. Uh, and also, like people talking about creating companies and all that stuff. Um, you know, most companies fail, right? So you might be able to fail faster but you still need to know how to run a company if you're building you know these software solutions and stuff so um big picture i'm all about entrepreneurship i'm all about people developing stuff and also one of the things that i think that what happens is the people that actually really win and are super successful with with, with uh with companies many times have deep subject matter expertise in what they're developing uh so you know say if i'm an accountant right and I know how to code. This is why I think everybody should be able to code. Maybe I can code some accounting software. If I'm a doctor or a medical student or something, maybe I can code a medical related uh, program. 
I think coding should be mandatory for everybody. Uh, I think that when I was growing up, we had used to have we have had a typing course that we used to have to take. Well, I think nowadays people need to know how to code because there's so many problems that you can solve with code. It's absolutely ridiculous. So um, that's my take on it. And hopefully uh, that makes sense. Yes, you still know how to code. You're going to get the most bang for your buck if you know how to code. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Um, and um, anything else is just boulder dash. Um, so learn how to code. Uh, another reason why is because Say if you get into coding and you're doing this vibe coding stuff, some companies are not vibe coding. So that means that you're limiting the, the you're gonna be limiting. And there's a lot of reasons why, for instance, right? Like some like uh, cleared positions, maybe eventually they'll get a, you know, a, a cleared vibe coding thing going on and I'm not in a cleared space, but eventually yes. But, but you, in order to get the most squeeze out of that, that orange, the, the people that know how to code are going to outperform you crazily, right? It's because they know how stuff works. And and it's just and that's just the way it is. So there's no offense or bust about it. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you need to learn, you need to skill up whatever it may be, whether it be cybersecurity, coding. Just because you can do it with AI does not mean you 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 should just a hey, I can use AI for it, right? That's like, you know, that's just like saying Oh, I'm going to be a mathematician, but I have a calculator, right? No, but yeah, you can use a calculator, but you need to know all the theory behind the stuff too. So my recommendation is, uh, you know, pick an open source project, try to code. The best way to learn how to code too is to pick something that you're passionate about to code. Um, I tell the story all the time when my son was like nine or 10 years old or something like that, he hated math. So I taught him how to put the formulas in code back in the day. It was Pearl. I'm showing my age a little bit, but but I but my son now does AI for a publicly traded company, and so that tells you a little bit about how. And now he's doing he's doing like code related stuff for this AI company, where he's doing automate code automation. So yeah, so yeah, learn how to code. Don't listen to all the flim flam. Uh, learn how to code. That's all I gotta say. I said it a thousand times, but hopefully it drills in. Go learn how to code. I'll see you next time. I'm looking in the mirror. What do I see? I see the only person alive that can stop me. I'm going to push it to the limit with it. Everything I got. I'm a rocket ship in motion. I'm headed to the top.